As promised on our last step, this week we've got more from IBC, including the first part, which is a look at Nuke 6.2 from the Foundry. Anxious to see what they've been doing, adding a lot of new things. Yeah, the Foundry is really great, and what I like about them is they're quite open about what they're working on and what they have in development. I really like these tech previews of the product, kind of see where it's going. There's certain openness that I think gets lost with some of the publicly traded companies, whether it's a fact or whether they're actually are hiding behind some of the SEC rules here in the States. Right. I love the Foundry being open to what they're doing. Yeah, and, and the Foundry booth in general, this, this every trade show, but this show in particular, it's just been really packed with people not only looking at the tech previews, but also breakdowns from artists, and we've, we've been able to take advantage of taking a look at a lot of those, too. Well, we caught up with John at the show floor, so we're going to go ahead and cross to that now. Okay, hi, everyone. I'm going to go through um, some features coming up in Nuke 6.2. That's going to be available towards the end of the year, around November, December. Um, it's a Nuke X heavy release. The research team have been very busy over the last year or so, and we're going to roll a lot of those features in uh, to Nuke. So I'm going to go over a quick demo of these top features here. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about them too much now, but I will talk about the bottom half that I'm not going to show. Um, we have a bunch of rendering performance improvements, uh, particularly with um, OFX, to make it faster and use less memory. We have some nice kind of uh, flipbook workflow things, like uh, you cancel the flipbook, you keep those frames so far, and transferring the region of interest down to the flipbook. Uh, stuff from from the file browser for uh, workflow. Black and shake when you get to select a file and go f to multiple directories and select different files. Um, and then like a refresh button and delete button. And we have uh, also a multi-line multi uh, expression editor for uh, Python. So let's get into it. I'm going to first show you a dense point cloud generator. So I've got a shot here that's um, We've taken 10 shots around this fountain. And then from that, um, I've done a camera track to produce a kind of points cloud like that with the camera going around it. And you can see, like, looking at the point cloud, it's, you can't really identify that that's a fountain, right? So what we've found, there's a lot of people who've gone into the camera tracker to make this denser and gone into the tracking thing and bumped the number of features up to like a thousand or something like that to get a dense point cloud. Um, but if we look at the refine tab here, the solve error is 1.6. So that's 1.6 is a 3K image. That's actually a really good solve, so it's a good camera. So actually bumping up those features is not a great thing to solve the camera. So what we've got now is this dense point, dense point cloud generator, which um, takes a, a solved camera from the camera tracker and also the, the source image, and then goes through and does another feature uh, search on the image. And that gives you something like that. So you can see now that's clearly a fountain, and it's uh, easy to identify what it is. So it gives you a bit of reference, so you can easily place your things in 3D around that. Um, on top of that, we've also got this uh, modeling tool. So if I just switch to 2D here. So the modeling tool allows us to start marking out features in 2D and then creating 3D geometry um, from those features. Again, it takes a, it takes a camera and it takes a source image. And then I can start um, plotting out where I think the faces are in the, in the 2D image. So I'm going to start doing that here on the front of this face very quickly. So I need to do a minimum of uh, two frames. So I'm going to do one there and then just one over here. Okay, that's pretty much it. And now, as I go through the frames, you can see there it's locking on through. That's actually not bad. Looks like it's almost correct all the way through. So if I switch to the 3D view there, you can see it's created a card in the 3D space. And I can start adding to that. So. If I want, I can go over here and then add another vertex here and another face. And then again, oh, it's gone a bit skew if there. Pick another frame, maybe this one to key on. So 
something like that, roughly. And that's not doing too bad a job there. It goes a bit wrong at the end. But you can key on as many things as you want here to get it, get it better. You can see again in 3D, that's starting to build up a bit of a model. So again, you can use this as reference or uh, you could start projecting on it. Um, we don't just have faces as well. You could just add 3D uh, points in there. And that's really nice kind of um, like a reconcile 3D, but live, so you can add lots of points. Um, all of this stuff as well is uh, available in this panel. And you can drive this with expression, so you could attach trackers to those if you wanted to. Um, and you can pull that data out and references in, in, in other places. So projection solve is kind of the, the opposite thing to what we've just been doing. So in the last kind of examples, we had the known camera, because we'd done a camera track to get a camera. And we had the 2D picture, but we didn't have the 3D. So we, may, we started to build a 3D model. In this, it's kind of the opposite. We've got the 2D picture, we've got a 3D picture, either created maybe with the modeling tool, or maybe you have a LiDAR scan, or um, some set measurements, or something like that. Um, and then we want to create a camera that is going to project that 2D image back onto the 3D model. So um, here at IBC, we actually uh, got our little nifty camera out and started to shoot the stand. So the first thing we did was we shot this grid. So I just created this grid in Nuke. Um, you can see there the video kind of uh, thing, kind of effect there because we took a shot of the screen for the grid. And then we put it through our uh, lens distortion tool to un undistort that. There's a distorted one, there's the undistorted one. And then we took a shot of the stand. So that's the stand taken from, from a particular angle as we're setting up. You can see it's a bit of chaos because before the, the show started. And then I uh, put that through the lens distortion as well to undistort it. And now if I'm just going to switch to um, a twin viewer layout here. We've got, um, we've got a model of the stand. So the guy who built the stand actually gave us the 3D model that he used to, to build it. So we kind of got this so we could check his work to make sure he actually built the stand to spec. So the idea is here, you, um, you find the 3D points in the model, and then you find the corresponding points in the 2D image. And then from that, it will give you a camera. So you need to do a minimum of six. I've already started to do this, so you can see I've got a, a few locations around there. But I'll just add another one to show you how it's done. So I've activated like the point selection here. And then I'm going to go to this sort of area around here and select a point. So let's go over there. Where are you? It's kind of about there. And then the 2D image, I just right click there and add locator. And that gives me a, a new correspondence point there. So you can see over here, I've actually added nine. You don't need to add that many, but the more the better, I think. And you've got the XY position in the, in the 2D image and the corresponding 3D image. So from there, I go to the uh, solve camera, which will attempt to create a camera that matches those two up. And then I press create camera, and that gives me my camera. So if I look now on the 3D of this guy, you can see it's created a camera pointing towards your geometry. And that, from my eye, kind of looks like it's right. But let's double check this by projecting the original picture back on the geometry. And then I'll just make this full screen. It gives you, turn off the vertex selection, gives you something like, like that. So it's done a pretty good job there. I think. I don't think we'll dock his pay for this corner. It's a little bit too high, but I think that's all right. So again, you can imagine that we could do a few of these from a few different angles, one from over, over one side, one from the center, and one from the other side, and then um, do a UV uh, unwrap and perhaps stitch the, the textures together to get all these areas around the other side uh, working. Uh, the other thing we're adding to Nuke 6.2 is um, some of the Katana code into Nuke. So Katana is our um, lighting and pipeline solution that we're um, going to be bringing out next year. But some of the back-end technology from Katana we're going to be using across our products. Uh, so the first one is Nuke. Uh, we've added the ability to render in an external renderer. And the first renderer is going to be um, RenderMan. So what I've got here is uh, a render man node, which is pretty much a drop-in replacement for the scanline rendering node. We have uh, matching shaders to match Nuke's internal shaders. 
But on top of that, we've added a few little extra bits and pieces that the, um, the Scanline renderer can't do. Uh, so for instance, I've got the, the watch here and I've added uh, on top here a reflection material. So then if I enable reflections here, we get a reflection of the watch off the bottom of the, um, of the checkerboard there. And the same thing with shadows, so I can, I can go in here at a wide, <laughs> wide light for the shadows. And we got some shadows happening there. We've also got, this wouldn't be a rendering demo without some um, gratuitous refractions. So, <laughs> oh, hang on, I haven't enabled the ref refractions. So I can have a refracting sphere there, turn that off. something like that, and then also we have kind of depth of field as well. And what I haven't got here working yet is, is we have motion blur as well. So all of the motion blur will match with your 3D renders. So this is good for, you know, big studios that have their pipeline driven around PR Man, they have their footage coming out of Render Man, uh, and the anti-aliasing and, and the motion blur doesn't quite match Nuke, but now they can render that scene in PR Man and get everything absolutely matching 100%. Um, I'd just like to say as well that we're not just adding this to Nuke, um, we're going to be adding this to Mari as well uh, later uh, in the beginning of next year. Um, yeah, so that will have random ad support too. Okay, last thing is um, Dope Sheet. So what I've got here is just this little um, effect here that's been rendered out over time. And to that I've added a little bit of an effect, so a bit, a bit of a grade. You can see the keyframes there in the timeline, just changing that. Oh, let's view it, it would probably help. Changing the color there over time. And then on top of that, I've also added a little roto just to, just kind of animate the very end there. So the dope sheet, I can view all of these um, keyframes now in the dope sheet, which gives us a kind of look like this. Um, so I can go in and then adjust the timing of any of those keyframes, so you can see them moving around there. I can also, and this is really cool, bring in the read node in the dope sheet, and that appears as well. And then I can select mul multiple ones and move not just the animation, but the actual timing of the read node as well. So you can see there I'm moving everything and also the read, and they're all coming together. So that would have been incredibly difficult before. Uh, it's not just a top level view as well, so I can drill down to the individual elements and start moving around, moving them around in time as well. And I can also, although this is a bit tricky with this version, pre-alpha. No, my box select is not working. I'll just show you the read node. Pre-alpha is not quite working, but in the read node as well, we have these little handles, so I can actually top and tail. So I can move that in, I can move this in. And then over time, I've now put a hold on the end there. You can see how that's stopping the animation. If I move that back a bit, move the timeline, you can see the animation there. So I can do a, kind of a little bit of a rudimentary edit in there if I wanted to. So that's pretty much it for the 6.2 preview coming out at the end of the year. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks.